Hi everyone and welcome to practice A-level biology for free with Miss Estrick. And in this video, what we're going to be focusing on practicing is the extended response questions and a little bit on the long answer questions as well. So if you are new here, click subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the future exam technique videos. So here we see a glance at the specification, just so you can see how this links to AQA A-level. However, if you're doing another exam board or a different qualification, you will still probably come across long answer and extended response questions, so this will help you. But what I'm going to be focusing on is how to approach the extended response questions. And if you have a look for paper one, two and three, they do all include a mixture of short and long answer questions. Um, for paper three, it's more critical analysis though. And the long answer questions can be based on any skill really. It could be testing your knowledge, getting you to apply your knowledge or even critical analysis. The extended response questions I'm going to show you in later on in the video, but they're mainly assessing your knowledge. And that links to one of the top tips that I'm going to be going through. So it's 15 marks on paper one, and let's have a look at some of these. So I've got here um, lots of examples of these extended response questions, which have been on past papers for AQA. And on the slide before, you could see that it said 15 marks of that paper will be extended response. And that will either be a combination of three five mark questions, or a four mark, six marks, and a five mark question. And having a look, you can see, as I said, they're mainly knowledge based. So they're just testing what you know. And we can see from these command words, we've got define, describe, explain, compare, contrast. They are the lower level skills in the exam technique. And just to clarify exactly, I've gone to this website, which is the AQA website, and I'll link that in the description so you can go there as well, just to refresh your knowledge on what those command words are actually asking you to do. So define is specify meaning, describe, give an account of, explain is give reasons, compare could be looking at similarities or differences, contrast is just identifying the differences. So as I said, these questions at the back of the test, the extended response, are really just assessing your knowledge. So for that reason, my first top tip out of the five is paper one, start at the back. Go straight to those 15 marks of extended response questions. Because assuming you have revised a lot, you should have the knowledge to be able to get um, nearly full marks or full marks on those questions. And paper one, students often find there's quite a tough time demand with that paper because they will be spending extra time on other questions, reading through information, analysing graphs, applying their knowledge. Whereas if you go straight to the back, you don't then run the risk of running out of time and missing 15 marks that potentially you could have quite reasonably achieved. So the next one, bullet point or draw a table, I'm going to demonstrate this. But what I mean by that is you don't have to write continuous prose and long paragraphs in any question on an AQA paper except for the essay. So make it easier for yourself and the examiner so they don't mismark your paper by bullet pointing your answer or even drawing a table. Link to this idea of helping you to make sure you've not missed any points, but also to make it as easy as possible for an examiner to mark your paper so they don't mismark it. Highlight what you think is a key word or marking point in each of your sections of the table or in each bullet point. And when I say highlight, you're not actually allowed to use highlighters in an exam. So instead, it could be you write in capital letters or maybe you just underline it. Top tip number four, if it is a five mark question, put six points down. So you've got one extra as an insurance in case one of your previous five wasn't actually on the mark scheme. And finally, this is about your continual preparation. Make sure you complete all of the extended response questions that are available on your exam board's website for both the AS and the A-level papers. Now that's going to help for a couple of reasons. 
Number one, you'll get much quicker at this idea of bullet pointing or drawing the table, highlighting the key word. So you'll become more time efficient before you get into the exam. Number two, it's just good revision of the knowledge. And then number three is really important. By completing all of those extended response questions, you'll get to the point where you can spot patterns in the mark scheme. And as I've been teaching A-level now for over 10 years, I'm well into that stage where I can spot patterns. And if I see a particular question, I already know what the mark scheme is going to be just from experience over and over again of seeing different versions of that question. So, for example, when it comes to any question to do with enzymes, what I always tell my students is have one of your marks linked to the idea of enzyme substrate complexes. Now, I've just written ES there for short, but you would have to write enzyme substrate complexes because that is one key word or key phrase that is always on the mark scheme. Similarly, with any question linked to proteins and explaining um, the function of proteins or describing the structure, there are always marks for correctly describing the bonds in each level of organisation. So primary structure, secondary structure and so on. And you too will start to notice those patterns with practice. So let's have a look at a worked example. And I've picked out this question, contrast how an optical microscope and a transmission electron microscope work and contrast the limitations of their use when studying cells. And this was actually a six mark question. So one way you could do it, I said, was bullet points. So on that page where you have the question, I would split it straight away into these two headings to make sure that I was addressing both parts of the question. So first thing then is we'll have a look at how they work. And because you've been asked to contrast, we have to point out differences. And whenever you are contrasting or comparing, you need to have the comparative or contrasting points all in one sentence. And therefore they should always be whereas in the middle. If you only talk about one side, so for example, if you just talk about the optical microscope and don't talk about the electron microscope, you won't get the full marks. So how they work, I've got a beam of light is condensed to create the image for an optical microscope. Now I need to contrast, whereas a beam of electrons is condensed to create an image for an electron microscope. The next thing, a beam of light in an optical microscope is focused using a glass lens, whereas it's electromagnets for the electron microscope. So that's straight away two points and it addresses the first part of the question. The second part is about limitations. So here I have a selection of limitations. And again, because it's a contrast question, in each of these bullet point sentences, there has to be that contrasting um, joining words. We've got here, whereas, lower, longer, shorter. So you are showing it's a comparison. So I've got an optical microscope has a poorer resolution, whereas the electron microscope has a higher resolution. This is due to a longer wavelength in the optical microscope because of light and a shorter wavelength because the electrons have a shorter wavelength in the electron microscope. Now, although that's one bullet point, that's actually two different ideas. So that would be two points. So we're already up to four bullet points to address a six mark question. We then go on to five, six, seven. So again, I've done seven points instead of six. So I've got that insurance, that backup. Um, and then I've got the idea of lower magnification, color image compared to black and white, living samples compared to dead samples. Now, when I said on the top tips, if I just go back, bullet point, you've already seen that. Um, I've shown you that I've done one extra mark. So seven marks instead of six. Now the highlighting, the key word, that's what I've done here in bold. And if it was written, I'd be underlining it. So I've underlined what is the concept or the key word or the feature that I'm referring to. And I would actually in the exam as well, write in capital letters um, where you have that comparison phrase. So we've got longer, shorter, lower, whereas to really emphasize you are contrasting.
Now the alternative is if you don't like the bullet points, do it as a table. You do not get penalized. You are absolutely allowed to write your answer as a structured table. It makes it so much easier for an examiner to mark it that they are less likely to miss something you've written. You're less likely to miss a concept or an idea that you want to add for your answer. Um, and the way I've done this one, you don't have to write whereas because we've already got the comparison. So for example, a beam of light is used to create the image, whereas for the electron microscope, here is a beam of electrons. So you don't need to have the whereas because we are quite clearly showing the contrasting features for the optical compared to the electron microscope. Same idea with all of those limitations I've said. Um, I've got the comparative or contrasting point directly next to each other on the same row. So I'm indicating that those are the contrasting features. So see what works best for you. And for some questions, a table might not work. It might not be appropriate and it might be bullet points are better, but absolutely go for bullet points or a table to save yourself time to help make sure that you are including enough marks and to indicate the keywords and to make it as easy as possible for an examiner to mark your paper. So that is it for exam technique on the extended response questions. Hope you found it helpful. If you have, give it a thumbs up.